We're back to the Total Tutor Show, powered by the Insightful Players series. Again, go to TotalTutor.net for more information. Twitter, Total Tutor, Neil S. Haley. Facebook, InsightfulPlayer.com. And I want to welcome back my co-host that really cannot wait every week for the insightful player because he learns so much from them and learns about their stories and how they're able to really give back to the community, but also how they overcome adversity. Jared, how are you? I'm doing great. And, and Neil, you know, the, the story is just is only part of it with, with all of the players that we have interviewed. Um, the, the, what they do, uh, the commitment to the community, to to children, to society in general, that, that is the real story that comes out with our interview. Oh, absolutely, and that's why I'm uh, partnered up with the Insightful Player Series, and again, they're partnered with the NFL, and they find great role models that empower youth that are NFL players, and they're, they're also featured in a book, and you can go to InsightfulPlayer.com to learn about it, and I'm really excited about these exciting educational programs and school assemblies that I'm going to be helping Insightful Player, because our education network, Jared, really, uh, it's a fantastic way to partner with them, because we work with schools all the time, right? Absolutely, and, and I think of a, a, a more apt and better scenario for these players going into schools and sharing their life experience with, with the young people in the audience. Okay, so I'm excited, and again, uh, I'm sorry for our Pittsburgh audience again, because, I, again, any of the teams, and I, I'm sure that uh, Keith can remember one of the battle games that he uh, faced or he was remembering when the Steelers had a battle against the Annapolis Colts at one point in time. But Keith has played in a few NFL teams, but ultimately he's an insightful player and Super Bowl champion. I want to welcome the program Keith O'Neill. Keith, thanks for calling. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. And uh, uh, again, anytime we mention any team, and it was very interesting when I had uh, Zoltan Mesco on my show, I said, finally, everyone was getting so mad at me saying, you you don't interview Steelers. So I said, well, don't worry. I- I'll make sure I take care of one. And that was a really exciting one. But Keith... Ultimately, what insightful players bring to the program is basically they don't come out of nowhere with just they they don't come out like as these god gifted talented players right off the bat. It's a struggle. Did you ever always did you th- think you would ever be an NFL player? Is it football wanted you what what you wanted to do? Oh, well, absolutely. Um, I actually grew up in a football family. My father was a first round draft pick back in nineteen seventy four. So with uh, the Detroit Lions, he was an All-American linebacker at Penn State. So growing up, I um, that's what I dreamed about being. And I, you know, there was a lot of pressure I put on myself, never from him, to be uh, eventually an NFL football player. So yes, I I did dream about playing in the league for for many years. I guess Jarrett, he's a little different than a lot of the other guys we've had on so far. But I mean, what pressure, Jarrett? And I'm sure you'll have some questions for Keith on this. Is that basically being in a family? I remember interviewing a uh, a figure skater that was part of an Olympic family, and he didn't. He talked about just all the expertise and pressure that's involved. But Jarrett, again, to to kind of stay, if your father was in the NFL, you want to definitely fall in your father's footsteps. So Jarrett, that must have been a challenge for Keith in a lot of ways. Not. Not simply uh, following the footsteps, but a, a first-round draft choice. Uh, those are, are, I'm certain, literally and metaphorically, big shoes to to fill when we look at the, the shoe size of a, of a professional football player. But, Keith, what I'd like to, to know here is um, what were some of the motivating factors, you know, when, when uh, – uh, you are looking for your career and, and, and moving there uh, towards the NFL. What are some of the things that motivated you um, beyond the, the dream of, of fulfilling a, a, a family goal? Sure. I, um, I was just one of those, those players that, um, that always gave 110% because I always, I always feared failure. And uh, I think that's something you're, some people are just born with. And I just want to, you know, prove to myself and to, um, you know, and other people around me that, that I could play football and that I could succeed, um, you know, not only on the field but in the classroom as well. 
And, and I'm, I'm glad I want to I want to jump in here because this is a, a, a familiar thing that we've heard with so many players, and, and Neil, just in our, our therapeutic practice, the fear the, the fear of failure. Um, what I want to ask here now is, you know, uh, Keith, do you feel that that was a, a healthy motivator? Looking back on it, do, do you feel that 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 fear was healthy or? Would you have liked something else motivating you? Well, here's the word fear. I don't know if that's a, the exact word. I, I do, to a degree, think that it is healthy uh, because when you do get into the real world, if you fail, uh, you, you're going to have fear. You're going to see it, you know, and that just translate over, translates over to athletics. Um, so ultimately, yeah, I, I, I do think it was, it was healthy for me to succeed uh, in football. And it, it is definitely uh, something that, you, again, you see it that I love this sport. I want to be as good as my father, and that constantly was a driving force for you. The process, were you as good as your brother and dad in football while playing in high school? Um, no, I don't think I was. Um, I think I had, I had the, the talent that they did. Um, but I actually overcame and had a lot of injuries in high school. I uh, had some surgery. I had some cramping problems. So I ended up going to a, a Division One AA school, FCS school. Uh, so I didn't, didn't get the opportunity to play big-time Division One football like my brother and my dad. So that was kind of fuel for the fire for me. Most definitely, and uh, Jarrett, that's that's interesting. Again, we hear about these these stories and these challenges, and that's a challenge to be in that family, right, Jarrett? Uh, absolutely. In fact, some of our most compelling stories are the, the players who really you know beat the odds. And I know that that's such an overused statement, especially within football. Uh, but uh, you know, here's an example of, of Keith you know, battling through those injuries. Uh, Going into a, a division uh, school that was was lower than where his dad and his brother played. And Keith, here's here's what I want to ask you: What was um, what what do you think helped you going to that division, uh, going to the, the the lower school within the the, the athletic uh, athletic community? You know, what, was there different coaching? Was there something along the line that really provided you that opportunity to eventually make it to the NFL? Uh, I, you know, I thought about that a lot, and I do think that going to um, a Division One AA school um, at the time was was the best move for me. Um, it allowed me to to play at a lower level, and I, I believe I, I did uh, stick out a little bit, so to speak, because mm-hmm. I was, um, you know, I played at a, at a higher level uh, than some of the players around me. But actually, going into my junior year in Northern Arizona, they brought a junior, a junior college transfer in, and they started him in front of me my junior year, and I almost uh, I almost wanted to quit. But he ended up breaking his leg on the third play of the first game, and that was what allowed me to go in. And, um, you know, I made all-conference that year and all-American the next year. Um, Wow. So that's something uh, yeah. that happened, Keith, is that there was uh, uh, another circumstance that could have changed your life in a lot of ways, but then you got sure. the opportunity and did it. Did you ever think, again, now you get into the, the the smaller school, did you think you had the shot of the NFL at that point in time? Did you? Um, you know, I knew it was going to be harder, but, yeah, I still never gave up my dream. I never uh, there was uh, you know, only one point where I thought that it wasn't going to happen, and that was you know when they brought the kid in from another school and put him in front of me going into my junior year, I was going to transfer. But uh, you know, I, I always believed that I was good enough to play in the NFL. And when the door opened for me, when uh, he went down with injuries, when I stepped in, and then I didn't look back from there. Absolutely, and uh, through that process, you saw. You know, I'm I'm going to reach my dreams, and and Jared, we talk so much about dreams and aspirations on this show, and especially our education show. When people do have a goal and they have a dream, and they know that no one's going to stop them, Jared, it happens most of the time, doesn't it? Well, and, and certainly, and and the, the the goal and the dream that that's that's the 
the, the driving component of this. And, and again, we, we, we hear another story about resiliency, that the ability to, to take a bad break, injuries, um, a, going to the school that, that, you know, a player didn't necessarily, uh, initially choose, but, but finding a, a positive within that, that framework. And, and Keith has touched a little bit, um, about some of the, the, the issues with bipolar disorder, and and I want to jump in here and, and keep this. Obviously, was a tough time for you. It could have been an incredibly difficult time. You talked about looking to transfer. Um, how did you stay positive through that? How did you, you know, keep from from moving into the depressive side of, of bipolar disorder? It was a. Uh... Well, at the time when I was in college, I hadn't been diagnosed yet. So I didn't really know when I would go through my mood swings and through my anxiety. I didn't know what was going on. I just thought it was me. But, yeah, it was uh, it was difficult. Um, it was the night before the game. The first game, that's when they sent me down and told me. And um, I actually, that night, I called my father and I told him that I wanted to transfer to a school back home. Because um, I was in northern Arizona and I'm all the way out from Buffalo, New York. And I'm like, if I'm going to sit the bench, you know, I'd rather sit the bench at home. And my father is the one who kind of, you know, just said, well, if that's what you want to do, we can do it, but let's just see how tomorrow's game goes. And, um, you know, next week we'll, we'll you know, put our heads together. And uh, so it wasn't definite that I was going to leave, but it was definitely a possibility. And uh, luckily I stuck it out. All right. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, when we get back, Keith, what we're going to do is uh, the way I kind of told the story. We're telling the story about just you're just an ordinary football player that went on to play in the NFL, hard work, a family of uh, NFL uh, uh, players and, and college football Division One players that you really uh, did it athletically. But during that time, it was living a difficult life, a challenging life in so many ways that you saw from at ch- your childhood all the way to playing in the NFL and uh, how you finally figured out that you had bipolar disorder and how you're able to cope with it now. You're listening to Total 2 Show on the Total Education Network, powered by the Insightful Player Series, and we'll be back in just... We're back to the Total Tutor Show, powered by the Insightful Player Series, TotalTutor.net, Twitter, Total Tutor, Neil S. Haley, Facebook, BeachLifestyle.com, SimplyG.com, and InsightfulPlayer.com. And I'm with Keith O'Neill and from the Indianapolis Colts. And uh, the story, really, I wanted to paint a picture for our listeners, and they're going to be surprised in a lot of ways, that basically this is just the average, uh, you know, everyone hears about the story of how you get to the NFL. And he, he, Cinderella's story. Keith looks like he's not going to be like his brother or his father, that he's going to basically play Division II, one uh, AA football, and then his career is going to be over. But he did make it to the NFL. And Keith, you did do this, but we're going to find out in the story that you had a lot of God-given talent Yet there were situations of things getting in the way from you really, really uh, becoming who you wanted to be on the football field, right, Keith? Yes, that's right. And that's the surprise for our listeners out there. So let's go specifically what we're talking about. So you you did play, you did get your Super Bowl ring, but during that time, we're going to find out that you got your dreams. You got to play for teams like the Cowboys. You got to play for the the Colts, but you were battling something. When at first did you have symptoms of bipolar disorder? When you had no idea, what age did would you say that it started? Sure, I would say it happened. First symptoms were as young as I can remember. Um, I know eight, nine, ten. I definitely had uh, extreme anxiety for no reason as a little child, but I couldn't sleep at night. So my symptoms started. My symptoms started at such a young age. Um, but I didn't know what they were, and I didn't know how to talk about them because I was a little kid, and, you know. So they started a long time ago. Interesting. And, uh, and, and, and Jarrett, that's, that's the uh, situation where a lot of people don't know what's going on with their body, especially when you're talking about lack of sleep, different things like that, and what's happening. Sure, and, and you know we know this now with all the research that we have done. I mean, the, the characteristics, the symptoms of, of bipolar disorder, they, 
they certainly manifest that early. For some some people, it, it's happening right around adolescence, but the, the, the characteristics and symptoms of it are, are certainly uh, starting to, to manifest themselves at, at that age. And, and Keith accurately described earlier in our show about this being a genetic disorder, and, and, and that is absolutely correct. Um, and so many times, particularly a decade, two decades ago, uh, you know, we, we viewed this as maybe a, a, a youngster who just was intense. Um, and I'm sure that's probably a word that, that was used to describe Keith, especially when he was younger and he was experiencing these, these things. Um, and and we, we put the wrong words you know, into into the the life of, of this disorder. You know, Keith, now you're you're older, you're 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 an adult. What did it feel like when when you got the diagnosis, when you got the explanation? Well, when I actually got it, I was in an extreme uh, manic state, and I was in a mixed state, what they, which they call it, when I, when I got diagnosed as an adult. So I wasn't really all that together. Um, but it was overwhelming. Um, it was very overwhelming, very scary, because I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what the, the, my life was going to be like. But at the same time, it explained a lot of things throughout my life, which was very, at the same time, very, uh, you know, relieving. Absolutely. And what really did kind of go back in the story, as I'm reading uh, some of the talking points right now, Jared, is that throughout, Keith dealt with certain things that many kids, and honestly, Keith, I have a, I have a, a, a student of mine that I tutored that ended up, uh, now he's, he's, he's turned awry in certain ways, but he suffered from a lot of things you suffered as a kid. He started drinking early. He got, he got into drugs and different things, and now he's going up for placement for 30 days. But I definitely am going to talk to them. Uh, his mom to talk to you because I think you would be a great role model to talk to him about this because he was diagnosed in certain ways with this, but he self-medicated himself and you made a lot of friends. However, during that time, making a lot of friends, you, you, you enjoyed drinking and you drank sometimes too much. So already you were self-medicating yourself in high school, weren't you? Yeah. Um, high school, I, I really was actually the most clear I ever was. I'd say the easiest my life seemed to be. It's when I got to college, I just, yeah, I wasn't an outcast or any, anything like that. I had tons of friends. I was, you know, pretty popular guy and, you know, but I, I drank a lot and that helped me, I hate to say it, but it, it was like a coping mechanism for me just to unwind because I was always wound up. And, um, so I did drink, uh, a little bit too much in college, um, well, way too much, <laughs> so well, Keith, I've been there, done that, so I understand. Right. I understand the drill in certain ways. We all, but but again, you were doing it to a point because you were feeling this, and we have to kind of go and paint a picture. So, in college, is would you say that's the time when those symptoms were really getting severe in a way, and you had no idea why, and you had to calm down, and you felt you're such a wired person? Tell us some of the things that would happen to you that uh, really you could spot something was going on, but you had no idea? Sure. Like, I, um, my, my number one symptom for me is anxiety. Um, I had extreme anxiety over everything, um, being far from home, playing football, school. But it wasn't just like your typical anxiety. Like, just these things kept me up at night. I also was, I was very moody, um, like irritable. Like, I was never mean or angry. Just, like, very irritable. Like, my roommate, who, uh, his nickname for me and some of my other teammates would call me the bear, you know, because I was just a moody guy. But, you know, at the other end of it, or the other side of me, I guess, I don't know. I'm, I'm very down to earth, very caring, um, very caring dude, you know. But just, I was a little moody. Um, and that sometimes I'd be moodier than others. So... And and we and this is Neil. I want to jump in here, and and, and this is what's so important to recognize with manic depressive uh, di- disorder, bipolar disorder. It's you know it's really the term that we we use now, and it's a, a much more accurate term. Yes. But um, it doesn't. This doesn't define the person. No. This is and this is what's important. And and Keith has shared with us. You know, this is who I was. You know, I was the kind. The, the, the sensitive person, the, 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 the person that, that had a, has a good heart um, and has the best interests of, of people. And then there was this other side that got in the way. 
Keith, uh, basically what happened after the drinking, you got you you got your life in order, like you almost went and you ha- came home. Then you get you got drafted, you ended up in the NFL you with the Cowboys. And while you were playing with the Cowboys under Coach Bill Parcells, you were running into uh, certain situations where uh, you couldn't sleep much, could you, for days. And uh, you really needed some mentorship, didn't you? Yeah, uh, my rookie training camp, and then during some other camps, um, I would go nights without sleeping. I know one was up to five. One, one episode was up to five nights, and um, I was frantic and I needed help, so I went in. I actually with the cowboy that tried to quit because I just couldn't do it anymore. But Coach Parcells sat me down, and you know we had a great discussion, and I saw a side of him that most people don't see, and he talked me through it. But then with the Colts, I. Same thing. I was in, and I had gone nights without sleeping, and I was in another episode, and that's when I went and asked for help to Coach Dungey. So, and that was so important to ask for that help. And and basically, right. once you asked for that help, Keith, uh, what, to co- what 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 advice did Coach Dungey offer you? Well, he brought in, um, and he was great. He brought in like the whole support staff. He brought in the uh, Mr. Polian, and he brought in the. Uh, team doctor and team trainers, and we all sat down with my wife, and um, they gave me some some medication. Um, but I wasn't diagnosed yet at the time. I hadn't seen a psychiatrist yet, and uh, they helped me get through. And you know, I still battled the next two years of symptoms and anxiety. But um, at least I just knew that they knew that I was battling with something, and um, you know, I could go talk to the, the team doctor when I needed some uh, anxiety medication. And so, go ahead, Jared. Uh, we, we talk about almost a, a divine intervention in, in this case. I mean, what better what better scenario for Keith to be in it to, to be with the Colts and, and Coach Dungey? We know the story of, of the commitment to mental health uh, and to the betterment of society that the Coach Dungey has devoted his life to, uh, both through the personal challenges that, that his family has overcome and and really just probably the best place for Keith to be at that moment. Definitely. Would you agree? Yes. I, I couldn't have been in better hands um, with Coach Dungy and the whole Colts, Colts organization. I 100%. So, Keith, basically you end up getting your dream of Super Bowl ring, uh, and life, out, life after football seemed great at first, and then, you did go back down again and tell us a little bit about that and then how you finally have been able to recover and to where you are today. Sure. I um, guess we moved back to Buffalo to be home your family after I retired from the NFL and uh, everything was going great. My wife and I, we got pregnant and uh, things were perfect and my wife had a miscarriage and that was the trigger that kind of uh, let it all out, I guess. And I went, into a, a severe, severe manic state, and I actually went into psychosis where I lost touch with complete reality, and um, that's when I got diagnosed finally with uh, bipolar one disorder mixed. And uh, we chatly, it took two years to get on finally the right medication and seeing the right doctors and talking to the right people. And now it's been about three years, and I can finally say I'm on the what I believe to be the right meds, which I do have to take every once in a while. But uh, I'm on the right medication. It took some time, and I'm finally going public with uh, what I went through, which is just as important for me uh, because sometimes I feel like the stigma of it and holding it all in is just as bad as the illness itself. Absolutely. And, Jarrett, that's where, again, we see another uh, – story of adversity and being able to overcome that adversity well and and what we talked about is is here again a, another another player another person within uh, the, the lives of, of everyone that we see allowing themselves uh, permitting themselves not to be defined by what they did on the football field what they the, the challenges they face but being defined by the total package. And Keith, um, what does it look like for you now? You talked about the, the healthy mental state, the healthy lifestyle, um, and you, you mentioned that just the tragic trigger that, that really kind of set this in motion several years ago. 
what does it look like now for you? I'm working on a, a couple things. I, um, I'm a part of the International Bipolar Foundation that I, I joined, and I'm trying to help them uh, create awareness um, throughout our country. And uh, I'm doing that, and I'm also working on a memoir. I'm in the, the beginning stages of my book, and I'm uh, hopefully it'll be on in a couple of years, and I have some great people working with me on that. And Keith, what you're able to to share this, you really are uh, a very, uh, I'm just very, very impressed and moved to share the story because a lot of people would not willing to do this, not willing to say this on air, and uh, you're going to help others. And uh, I have to say that and commend you for that, Keith, because if you wouldn't go out there and tell your story, there's somebody else listening tonight on this show that is are gonna, that's going to say, my gosh, I'm going through the same thing. I need to go and ask for help. I need to go and get something because there's so many people in, in our society that are struggling through these things, any type of depression or bipolar disorder or uh, even, even a situation where uh, postpartum predict. Uh, depression, that they're not willing to ask for help or get help, and they're suffering through these things. But by you, a Super Bowl champion, sharing your story, you are now going to help somebody else listening right now. Thank you, and I, I hope so. If I could just reach out and, and help, you know, one person, um, that's all. That's all I want to do. And it's, I feel like uh, in this country. Um, there is a problem with mental health and not addressing it. And people aren't coming out and people aren't talking about it because of the stigma. And it's crushing. It, it crushed me for two years. I didn't leave my house because I hate to say it, but I was a Super Bowl champion who just got diagnosed with bipolar disorder and I couldn't, and I was depressed. And I wouldn't leave my house for two years. Finally, I'm okay now and I want to help other people who are just like me. Isn't that amazing, Jarrett? That's what I said about couldn't wait to interview him because of just hearing that story and to hear him share this. Absolutely. And, and you know, another another story, another history of, of a player overcoming adversity, facing and not hiding. You know, it, the, the easy thing would have been to, to, to do the treatment um, and 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 keep it under covers, but to bring it forward, to say, just as Keith said, to help just one person, you know, that's significant. Uh, not, not necessarily the dream of helping the whole world. That would be terrific, too. But to just say, if I get out there and help one person, that's, that's what I like to hear. That's, that's the amazing story. Absolutely. So, Keith, uh, basically, what is your ultimate goal with going out and telling the story to really uh, educate people about this? And you being a spokesperson for this, to, to in a way, as a poster child, the way to show, hey, I can get better. I've done such, I, I was able to do it on the football field, the success. Now I want to really help others. My goal, I have a couple of goals. My number one goal is to just inspire others who have similar challenges that I had. Because uh, it's very, it's, 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 it's very hard to, I don't want anyone to have to go through what I went through. So if there's anyone out there who is going through bipolar disorder and is having a hard time, I just want to inspire them um, that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and I also just want to create awareness um, because nobody's talking about this anywhere. Um, I mean, I didn't even know what bipolar disorder really was when I was 33 years old with a college education. And people need to be educated on these types of things, not just bipolar disorder, but all types of mental health issues. Yes. And it needs to start. It needs to start at a young age, in elementary school. I mean, we can learn about other things. Uh, we need to implement mental health in our education system. That's what I believe because we need to grow up knowing what this thing, these things are, and being okay with it, and being able to help people who do have have bipolar disorder instead of being scared of them. Okay, last question, and this is one that I really, I, I just, uh, by the way, had my first coaching session with Coach Carew, and Keith, I was amazed. I was so blown away by her, and I, I wanted to ask you what it means to be an insightful player. Oh, it's quite an honor, um, just to know that I'm on Roger Staubach as an insightful player. It's, just, it's quite an honor to be uh, in that category and working with Coach Carew, um, what she's given us players, um, 
to uh, her mission is to spread our word and for us to be able to help others, uh, especially children, is, is quite an honor. And I'm so happy to be part of this, and especially with all the cities that we're on all over the and all over the world, what we're trying to do, and and the ultimate goal of Coach Carew. She is just, I, Keith. I can't even say it in words how she inspires people, doesn't she? Yeah, she's been great with me ever since I talked to her. It's been about a month now since I started walking with Coach uh, Coach Carew, and she is uh, very inspirational for me. She's been very supportive. Uh, for me, and uh, I know if I ever need to speak with someone or talk to someone, she'll be there. So, Jarrett, another great, insightful player. I, I tell you, we never have enough time for them, do we, Jarrett? No, I mean, these, these, the, the interviews could go for hours because the, what we have done on this show is just introduce uh, the steps that, that each of these players, and, and Keith today, the steps that, that he took to evolve and and be the person that that we talked about on the show. Be the person that you that you know you are and that you want to be. All right, Keith. Where can we find information on you? Learn more about you. Sure. Um, well, right now I am working on a website. Um, you guys are actually one of the first interviews I've done, um, but I am working on a website. It will be uh, keithoneal dot com. But currently, I just have a, a Facebook page uh, and I'm on Twitter. Uh, my Facebook page is uh, Keith O'Neill, and uh, my Twitter is. Keith D. O'Neill. Yes, I already tweeted you out, and then we'll have to tweet you out when all the air, all the stations that air on syndication. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us and really share your message. So thanks for calling, Keith. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. You're listening to the Total Tutor Show, powered by the Insightful Player Series, powered by the Beach Lifestyle Celebrity segment. And we'll be back in just a moment.